you, yesterday we talked about how Jesus needed to go from Judea in the south to Samaria, excuse me, to Galilee in the north. And he went through a city called, or a region called Samaria, and a city called Sychar. Now I'm going to show you a little map so you have an idea of where Jesus was and where he was going. I'm going to bring that up nice and close. Okay, so here is the map. Jesus was here in Judea. This is Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Jesus is going up to Galilee. Remember his first miracle about turning the water into wine? That was done here in Cana of Galilee. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. So there's Nazareth where he grew up, Cana where he started his first miracle. So Jesus is traveling from Judea to Galilee. And he's going, he went through Samaria. Here's Sychar where he stopped and he uh, was talking with the woman at the well. So he's going up here into Galilee. And see over here, ooh, we over here, Capernaum. We're going to see someone from Capernaum in this lesson. So that's where Jesus is and what he's been doing. So remember in our last lesson, he talked to that woman from Samaria, which was very unusual for a Jew to do. They did not talk to Samaritans. They did not give them the time of day. But Jesus did with this woman because Jesus didn't care whether you were Samaritan, whether you were a Galilean. God didn't care if you were from Rome or from Greece or from England, which wasn't even England yet. He didn't care about any of those things. He loves people for who they are, and anyone can become a Christian. And so Jesus talked to this woman, and she accepted Jesus as her Savior, and so did almost everyone in her village. Afterwards, Jesus continued on to um, Cana of Galilee. And when he was there, he would go into the temple and he would preach and teach. And the people there had heard about the miracles that Jesus was doing, how Jesus was healing people, how um, Jesus was doing all kinds of interesting things. They had seen for themselves how he had turned the water into wine. And so they were very interested in listening to him. They didn't understand yet that he was the Messiah, as Jesus had told the Samaritan woman. They just viewed him as someone who could do cool things, who could do great miracles, and had a lot of knowledge about the Bible. Well, there was a nobleman who lived in Capernaum. Remember that city I showed you? Capernaum? Well, there was a nobleman there, meaning he was very important, he had a lot of power, he was a government official. And so this nobleman, he had a son. I don't know how old the son was. Maybe he was about your age. Maybe he was a little older, a little younger. We'll pretend he was about your age, but we don't actually know. He had become very, very sick. So sick that everyone just knew he was going to die. There was nothing that anybody could do. The only way he could get better was by a miracle of God. Well, this nobleman, and we don't know what his name was, he heard that Jesus was in Cana, about 15 miles away. Now, nowadays, to travel 15 miles, you can get in your car and it takes you know, about 15 to 20 minutes to go 15 miles. Not back then, they didn't have cars. It would take you hours to go 15 miles. You'd have to ride a donkey or walk or something like that. It, it, it would have been a little bit of a trip. But this nobleman, for him, it didn't matter. His son was dying. He wanted to do whatever he could so that his son would be healed. And so he went, and it was about one o'clock in the afternoon, so he probably started out early in the morning, and he went and he found Jesus there in Cana. Jesus had, Jesus had just finished um, teaching in the temple, he, so he left the temple and found this nobleman. He would have been well-dressed, probably dressed in his finest to come on this important mission. But I'm sure he looked really worried, really frazzled, and probably dirty and dusty from traveling that long way on those roads. He came to Jesus and he fell down at Jesus' feet and he said, Jesus, please help me. My son is sick. He's dying. He's not going to make it. Please, I know you can heal him. Will you heal my son? And Jesus looked at him. And Jesus, he had all the love and compassion for this man's son. But he also wanted to pe people to know and to trust him, not just for his miracles, but for who he was, that he was God, not just some cool person that could do cool things. And so he said, won't any of you believe in me unless I do miracles? Well, this nobleman, he 
He really didn't care. He was concerned about his son. And so he begged Jesus. He knew that Jesus could do this miracle. He knew that Jesus could heal his son. And so he said, please, Jesus, please hurry. Please come to my home. I know that you can heal him. I believe that you can heal him. And Jesus, he continued to have compassion on this nobleman. And so he said, I don't need to go with you to heal your son. Your son is healed. Go ahead, go home. You see, the nobleman, he believed that Jesus, Jesus could heal his son. He just thought that Jesus had to go there to do it. Like any doctor, doctors can't heal if you're in some other city. They can't heal you from where they are. No, that's not how that works. But Jesus, he didn't have to go see the boy to be able to heal him. But the nobleman at that point, when Jesus said that, your son is healed, he believed. He knew that Jesus, whoever he was, had the ability to do this. So he got up off his feet and he went on his way home. Now think about that. That was great faith because what if he was wrong and his son wasn't healed? By the time he got home, it would be too late for him to turn around and come back and get Jesus to come with him. This was it. He believed that he wouldn't need to come back, that his son had been healed. So as he's on his way on the long journey, two of his servants come running to meet him. You, you have to hear this. Guess what? Guess what? We have the greatest news. We have the coolest thing to tell you. What? What's happened? It's your son. He's healed. The fever just left him. He is totally better now. You would not believe it. What time? What time was it that my son got better? Um, it was about one o'clock that the fever left him. One o'clock? That was the same time that Jesus had told him, your son has been healed. And so the nobleman knew there was more to Jesus than just being some special man with special abilities. He realized he was the Lord. He was God. He was the Messiah. And oh, he was so excited. His child had been healed. So he hurried back home. And when he got there, his son came running out to meet him. Oh, how exciting that would have been. The last time he had seen his son, he was, he was this close to dying. He wouldn't have even been like his son anymore. But now here he was, joyful, playful, and all better. And the nobleman knew that Jesus was the Son of God, that he was who he said he was. And I'm sure that he went and he told other people, he would have told his own son this story, you know what happened? You were going to die, but then Jesus saved you. And so people started to believe more and more that Jesus was who he said he was. That he wasn't just a person who could do miracles. There was something special about him. And we're going to continue to see Jesus continuing his ministry, continuing to show people who he was in our next lessons. But for now, we're going to go ahead and stop there. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. I love you so very much.